Hey, I think I'm back. I'm back. Um. Game's not, though. And I'm kind of scared to launch the game again. We are back. Uh. Like I said, the game crashed OBS. Oh, my bitrate's a little unstable. Hang on a second. My bitrate's not even unstable. It's just everything's freaking out for a minute. Let's let OBS settle for just a second. So, um... This is the second time... This is the second time it's, uh... The game has crashed and crashed OBS with it. Do we... <laughs> I don't know what else I can do, and I'm very upset that all the games we've been playing lately have been very, uh, finicky, to say the least. Do we... want to... Yeah, this technical difficulty arc has, has been very rough. Um, we got over the shitty internet arc, and on to the technical difficulty one. Game looks very good. But again, I'm afraid that, like, I'm gonna get in and it's gonna crash, or it's gonna continue to crash, and end up killing my characters, which makes it not super fun. Um, so I can poke around, see what I can do about making it possibly fixed. Um, because I haven't deep-dived into, um, into the discussion boards yet to see what homebrew fixes there are for it just yet um so i can see about that but again we do got a backup game the plans were <coughs> excuse me um were to try the other games that we had listed um so tiny bunny and then vampire do we want to uh so tiny bunny is more of a visual novel so it is a lot of reading which i'm fine with doing do we want that, or do we still want something that's, like, a little more action-y? Uh, which is, I guess, what you would consider vampire? Um, uh, Tiny Bunny was the next one, the next heaviest voted one. So we, I'm fine with doing that next. But again, it's just kind of, like, what you guys want, you know? On just a second. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. I get that. Um, I think it's shorter than Vampire is, though. I guess, what are y'all feeling? Do we wanna... Let's do a poll real fast. Let's just get a poll. Yeah, I mean, I've got Tiny Bunny and Vampire downloaded and, and ready to go. They are both available. Oh! Hit me hitting buttons. Um. Yeah, please don't tie the poll now. <laughs> please. It's, it's, it's a one-minute poll. Y'all vote, please. Also... Why are you telling me it's my bitrate's unstable? It's holding. <laughs> Twitch, you're incorrect. I mean, we can do the rabbit game. You gotta vote for it, though. Everyone's voting for Tiny Bunny. We're gonna do Tiny Bunny. Perfect. Beautiful. <laughs> Poll's not even done. Tiny Bunny's already won. All right. Um, Let's set that up, then. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Valid. Um, now let's get Tiny Bunny going. Give me just a second. Game capture. I am upset about Song of Horror. That's, an, that's the second game that I've been like, this looks really cool and I want to play. And then it's just been like, no, I don't, I don't think you will. Um, but yeah. Let's do Tiny Bunny, I guess. It's fine. Oh, and it's very loud. And not 
properly centered here. There we go. That's better. Um, this game contains offensive language and scenes of physical and psychological violence. Um, thank you for the content warning. Let me also move on this. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. Already upset about that. Is that too loud for y'all? I don't like it. I don't, I don't like him. He's not. Not great. Sounds good. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I'm sure his coat's cool. <laughs> Um, hey, mods, re Travis and or Allie, I suppose. Uh, y'all wanna try and look up content warnings for me? Uh, does the dog die? Does not have any for it. I would appreciate it so much. Um,. Otherwise, I can just put in what it told us. It's actually what I will do for right now. Um, and then if you guys find anything, if y'all could update Moobot for me, that would be cool. Boop. All right, well, game link is updated. Allie's on it. Fantastic. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Alright, and then let's... Thanks for bearing with me. I appreciate it. Done and done. Titles updated. Okay. Bear with me. <laughs> I love that joke so much. Um, dope. Thank you, Allie. Uh, I'm gonna just help double check the settings real fast. Sorry, read text? What? I'm sorry, is it? All voice acted? That's what Steam said the developer said. That's fine. I, again, wish it was a little more detailed, but I appreciate the fact that they have put it on the store page. That's, that's literally all I ask for. <laughs> so, hey, good on them. But yeah, this game has cool art. Um, I've heard it's spooky. The wind clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices. Shrill, gentle, sneery, tw uh, twined in the air. Is there a save option, just out of curiosity? There is. Okay, cool. They were shouting and laughing and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own, the creaky old mind of a building that had seen a lot in its days and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest, and the dark green thicket gazed back with its hollow eyes, rustling, whizzing, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves. There was nobody behind that, uh, the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. Just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was just my imagination. I was already 12 after all. Still... There's a face! There was a little- there was a little fox face! I'm 12. I'm a grandma. A child. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Travis. <laughs> Episode one, the owl will arrive. 
Oh, this is so bright. My poor eyeballs. Убери книгу немедленно. Hey, put away your book. Сколько раз говорила, не читай за столом, вредно. Сидишь, сутулился весь. Hey, mom, I love you. I think you're speaking Russian. Which I do not speak. Uh... I can't turn it off? And I don't necessarily want to get rid of the voice audio, because what if there's, like, little gasps or something? Alright, well... Uh, how many times have I told you not to read at the table? It's bad for your health. Look at how slouched you are. Hide? I didn't protest, so put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. Nerd. I was stuck on a line I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Olya had already finished uh, her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic she almost looked like her, uh, your typical girl from commercials. Theme in the back is a fucking banger. <laughs> You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make a, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness welled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forest around our house, and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. It looked like a jellyfish from the Casto Odyssey. I love that show. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is, or how cold the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. I had ten seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this? Carved on the other side of the table. Karina? Huh? That's my mom's name. I guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar, though. Should I remind her about it? No, she's been in a bit of a bad mood lately. I imagined her being my age, sitting under this table. I wonder, was Mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or the thick forest? I imagine my grandma coming into my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed where Olya sleeps nowadays, and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. Taiga is a special place, little girl. It's watching you closely, sniffing you out, trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it'll grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. And that would be it. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody, never yelled, never swore. Those were the times without maddening screams until late at night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Yeah, the uh, the Russian voice acting is great. I just wish I could understand it. <laughs> I wish I spoke Russian. Our parents used to love each other back then. I remember listening in one of their co uh, listening in on one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for her funeral. It's not too late. Ah, uh, I mean... I could learn. Surprise, I'm gonna drop all of my French studies and just start picking up Russian. It's fine. <laughs> she had already bought a casket, and she called it her cute funeral box. It waited for its time in the closet, patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat-colored material on the inside. I think you mean red? Do you mean red? Spicy bowl? Spicy bowl? I assume that's a, ph a phonetic spelling of a word. <laughs> I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. Spicy bowl. <laughs> Look, I'm fluent in Russian now, guys. <laughs> Spasibo. Spasibo. <laughs> Wait, do you speak Russian? Travis? Is this a thing I didn't know about you? A little bit? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was like, 
wait a second. Enough to watch cartoons. I do remember that little that little monkey cartoon, and I can't remember its name for the life of me. But it, <laughs> I do remember you like you watched that a bunch, so I'd assume so. Sheshbarashka? I don't know if that's how you say that at all, but yeah, that one. <laughs> Cheparashka? Russian is wild, y'all. Ridiculous language. Ridiculous in a good way. Just languages in general. Wild. Um, where are we? House didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of the photos were gone. Glass covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. I crawled out from under the table. Olia was done with her cookies and was looking at my share like a sly woodland creature. I turned my gaze toward the frosted window. There were a lot of dark pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. A pattern of frost formed a picture on the glass. Olia, look, it's a fox. Where? It looked almost like those optical illusion thingies they put on the back of a student notebook. A mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision a little bit, you see it. And look under a certain angle. I guess I can turn down. Hold on a second. Um. There we go. I had the gamma up a little bit from uh, Song of Horror. We don't need it up anymore. Um, not outside, on the window. Look, here's the nose, and here's... Hey, eat up. Also, she's got crumbs on her face. Um, Since this is Russian, I can pretty much guarantee how it ends. Everyone dies? Is that... <laughs> is that... Is that the ending? Is that how it's gonna end? Or worse? Alright, val valid. It's just, it's gonna be tragic, no matter what we do, and I'm ready for it. Yes, yes, just a moment. I don't see anything. Hurry up, there's not much left. <laughs> Fruity, no. Aw, there it is. But it still doesn't look like one. And I'm telling you, it does. Nuh-uh. It does! Прекратите. Stop it! These these kids, I swear. Now I couldn't see the fox either. It disappeared. Went away. <laughs> now you just gotta you just gotta spitball them. I didn't click on anything. Um, only the frosty pattern, similar to stretched out nettle leaves, kept uh, kept crepping in the glass. Creeping up on the glass. Words. Hi, Daddy. My dad entered the kitchen with long, measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. Mom would always ask jokingly, Come on, shave it off, it stings. <laughs> you get version 1.0 because we're afraid Travis will beat you. Maybe it is Lennon. Who knows? This was so long ago. Nowadays, rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Olya always covers her ears whenever she hears something like, What's the point in all this? through the wall. It's all for your sake, Dad would reply. For the sake of our family. Always caught every sound in fear of hearing the most dreaded, the deadliest word that started with a D. D-I-V-O. Oh, divorce. I don't even want to finish it. I was like, Devo? You don't want to hear- I mean, that's not how I spell Devo, but it's like, you don't want to hear about my cat? Why? It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl on my window. You and your owl talk again? Medicine cat honks in the distance. You said you believed me yesterday. Has anyone seen my car keys? I remember leaving them on the windowsill. Right. Maybe you did? 
Maybe not. You're a grown man, father of two, and still. Перестань, пожалуйста, Карина. Please stop. Дай мне спокойно собраться. Let me get ready in peace. В корзине твои ключи. Возле телефона. Your keys are in the basket near the phone. Огромное тебе человеческое спасибо. Thank you very much. Антон, ешь быстрее, а то как мучаешь. Антон, stop making a martyr out of yourself and finish eating already. Особо? Не было. Hold on. But the owl. I am going to turn their voices down just a smidge. There was no owl. But there was one! He had giant glowing eyes! Olya sprung up from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers the size of an apple each. Last year you had Babai in your closet, and now this owl? What does this mean? Info? <gasps> There's a glossary?! Bye bye In Slavic folklore, a nocturnal spirit used by parents to threaten their ill-behaving children. I appreciate this. This is awesome. Okay. Not me being super excited about them giving us context for things. But, but, but I saw it! Olya shifted her gaze back and forth from dad to mom, uh, from dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. I mean, like, the art is really gorgeous and super cool, and, like, the voice acting is really great. Again, I wish I spoke Russian, but, I mean, we've got an English translation, so I can't be too upset about it. But it sounds amazing. Um, and we get a glossary, too? Ugh. Already 10 out of 10. <laughs> Have you thought about befriending it? You know, like feeding it with imaginary mice. Don't bully our girl. She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. Olya pouted her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Mom gave Dad a strict look. Oh, look at that face! Oh, you can't really see her. Oh no! Hold on a second. Look at that face! She's so angry. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be, uh, to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing with the keys as, uh, ringing with the keys he just found. A minute had passed and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. It was stored on incredibly worn out cassette tape, which Dad already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects by gluing them back together, for example. But how do you fix a relationship? Mom moved to the living room and I was left alone, anxiously stealing glances at the window. Oh, buddy. Olya had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to this house. Look at this precious little child. <laughs> right? It's, it's not easy to fix a cassette tape, but let him believe. She would toss and turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump up in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped to take her mind off all the troubles uh, we had with the move and our parents. <laughs> Have you tried putting glue on them? Have you tried super gluing your parents together? That's horrifying. And then Olya said she saw that giant flying monster outside her window. She became obsessed with it. Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Olya refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After last night, I was unsure what to make of my sister with words, what to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? That night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect from my new school. There were a couple of days left before the beginning of a new term. My imagination drew long, twisting hallways that led to a classroom full of kids. But all the students behind their desks were simply dark figures cut out using a template. Circular holes uh, gapped in the middle of their faces, and pairs of eyes blinked inside those holes. It was as if uh, some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat, uh, flat black silhouettes. Okay, that creaking is coming from the game. Spooky. Their cruel glares, filled with icy sneers, made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp on me with their bloodied shoes? The damn school can burn for all I care. I just wished for anything to happen to it. 
Doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go there that badly. I didn't want to see people who were just itching to smack me on the head, trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me, worse than the previous one. I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider, some sort of a monster. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Olya begged me to hang them. The drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. A small circle of friends I had also enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagine Mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number. Or, Anton is not around. Anton is not around. I imagine my future classmates lying in their beds, just like me, listening to the howls of invisible werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all? But who would ever like a boy with thick glasses? I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little, and now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet, my mom. The house creaked, pressed by the wind. The condo we used to live in, a nine-floor concrete building, buzzed with the neighbor's drills, mumbled with the TV set from behind the wall, cried like a baby from the big family next door. Our current house, though I can't really call it new, was completely different. Right, this poor kid! I do remember being 12 and thinking the entire world was up against me, though, so, like, I get it, buddy. These are all very legitimate fears. It was silent and easygoing during the day. Its shadows lay dormant in the corners, on the closet, cobwebs, and under the stairs. But they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner, almost as if the old photos of my diseased family with their ashen eyes were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. Hold on a second. I'm going to... No, come here. I'm going to move chat up, and I'm going to move me up just a smidge. <laughs> I mean, also a valid point. <laughs> I remember three days ago when I felt like everything was against me. I get it, kid. The feeling never goes away. You just learn how to mediate it a little better sometimes. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, alright, that's a little better. Or do I want to put myself in the top left corner? Gotta cry one out for the homies, okay, kid? You'll, it'll be fine. You'll be fine, kid. Don't worry about it. Hold on, yeah, I am gonna... <clears throat> hide myself up in this corner here real quick. Give me Papa Lennon. <laughs> oh, no. Do I wanna... Do we all just live over here now? I think we all just live over here now. We all live over there now. Uh, the floor was squeaking, rusty drains were moaning, the attic was occupied by noisy drafts. The f uh, one could think the house was performing some sort of demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> It was mixed in with the sound of the wind, of the creaking old house, and my thoughts, too. I stood up and rushed to the window. Excuse me. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like someone is playing it there amidst the cold, snowy night, right? Someone was dancing in the field. Sorry, I feel like no matter what I where I put things, it's just a bad place for everyone. That's fine. Someone was dancing in the field. Black silhouettes I could barely make out with the dark forest as their backdrop. They jumped around, basked through moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. They stood upright at times, circled around holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment and then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious at the same time. Suddenly, the music had stopped. The dancing shadows froze in place and, I could swear, pierced me with their eyes. 
One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. I didn't like those noises. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> it glided on squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch black shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. My heart was jumping around like the bird inside a cage. I shut the curtains with a swift motion and stepped back toward the bed. They saw me. A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guests move and scrape around, looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right, then circled around the house. Now my guests should be at the front door. I jumped into the bed and covered myself with the blanket, as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remembered the funeral, my grandma lying there, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll. Ants running up and down the legs of chairs that held my grandma's casket. I imagined those little creatures climbing up her head and pulling up her eyelids with their tiny legs. Then her wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their sockets and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. I was chanting the spell she taught me throughout the whole procedure. And now, lying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the Isle of Buyan, underneath the blemished sun, in the sea of color blue, stands a cabin made of wood. Evil leave this house must. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Bizarre sounds uh, had disappeared. I cautiously peeked out from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hanged man. And then, the night doused me with a new portion of boiling terror. The sound scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone were scratching at the front door, hurriedly clawing at wood, demanding to be let in. The door was shut. Dad had become very cautious re recently, so he installed the sturdy lock. I remember him staring at the forest intently, as if he was looking for someone. <laughs> Ashes to ashes! Dust to dust! I hugged my knees, placing my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the night- uh, before the might of darkness. And then... Oh, fuck no! <laughs> the doorknob twitched slightly. Then it turned halfway. Once. Twice. As if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more, and then started clicking violently, not twitching like a bunny nose. My jaw cramped from fear. My wet fingers clutched the blanket. The door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin drinks. It's gonna be our sister! That's all it's gonna be! It's just gonna be Olya! Olya's just gonna come in and be like, I, I thought it was the owl! And it's gonna be horrible and awful? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. That's my guess, right now. It's too early for something bad to happen. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin drains. Now... Now you'll see. The door was wide open. The darkness writhed inside the carnivorous mouth of a doorway. To me? It was as if the night itself was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with- er, yeah, squeaking with rusty hinges. Okay, fair point. I was trembling, ensnared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, waiting for uh, for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. Tony. My abdomen tightened and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me, Tosha, you asleep? It's just the sister, like I said. That was terrifying, wow. though. <laughs> the scariest thing that it could possibly be. The sound design? Very good. My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. 
Я... Я не сплю. Олья? Что случилось? I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Olya frowned and stuck out her or stuck out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. It's there again, staring at me. You were away, Tosha. Please, I'm scared. The fear that was tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I needed to calm Olya down. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Dreams don't bite. No one's going to harm you. Her? <laughs> Olya sobbed. She was trying her best to believe me. But was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch the video, Sleeping Beauty, for example. You like that cartoon, don't you? <laughs> Why does the Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have this scary bird? The question took me by surprise. Alright, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What studied me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by Grandma's old chants. It couldn't be satisfied with a feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tosha, you coming? Yes, yes, just a moment. Jesus fucking shit! <laughs> We're fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> they got me. They got me good. <laughs> Hydrate from Travis. I can do that. Oh boy. And a stretch. We just had a good jump scare. I need everybody to, uh, I need everyone to stretch, drink some water, take a couple of deep breaths, let out all the tension. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> This is doing it good. I like this. <laughs> Guess you gotta call off work? Sorry, I can't show up. Game scared me too much. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to laugh at Olya and her owl in the morning. Oh, this is... Okay. That's what happened last night? I got scared. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, can't go, spooky rabbit. I don't think that was a rabbit, though. That was a wolf, right? Who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? I guess that that was him recounting the night before. Okay. That makes sense. We don't know anyone around here. <laughs> it's definitely a wolf. Can't confirm. All right. Please, also, please don't let rabbits sound like that. They already make bad enough sounds. Uh, so persistent. Felt extremely unsettled just from a silly thought that our morning guests could have come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming from the front door. My mind was urging me to hide. In the closet, under the table, behind the curtains where Olya always hides. Otosha, come here! I felt like kettleballs were tied to my feet, but still dragged them toward the hallway. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. My mom always winced and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars. Worse than bandits. At the moment, though, she looked somewhat confused. Hello. The senior officer, who wore a grim expression, nodded. A boy had gone missing yesterday. His name's Vova. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? The policeman held out a photograph to me. <gasps> look at that cat! Kid's also pretty cute, but look at that cat! 
the ginger boy around the age of elementary school, pictured with a wall carpet as the backdrop. He had a striped cat in his hands and wore a wide smile. Look, it's farts. That cat's too small to be farts. Let's be real, though. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> no Cheshire cat here. Are you sure? Look closely. Where would I see him? I don't know anyone around here. I barely leave the house. Well, maybe you've seen him from the window. That's right. Your window looks straight at the forest, don't they? The window... No, I haven't seen anything. Yes, no. I see. He sounded tired, but his eyes... His stare, long and heavy, was full of suspicion. I squirmed unwittingly under the weight of guilt, which his giant shadow cast over me. The policeman finally tore his eyes from me and glanced over the hallway, the stairway, and the cracks in the ceiling, which I hadn't noticed before for some reason. How do you like your new place, by the way? Getting used to it? Bit by bit. It's just our little daughter missing. Uh, it's just that our little daughter misses the city a lot. Is this a city, huh? Have the locals been treating you well? Yes, everything's all right. Thank you. The policeman pierced through me one more time with his gray eyes. My head started spinning. Um, can I help you somehow? I asked that in shaky voice to look like a uh, polite boy and to end this unpleasant conversation sooner. Now that I think about it, you look just like one of my nephews, little fella. He's a witty boy around your age. He's the same type of go uh, goggles. <laughs> Always engrossed in reading those mystery novels. Told me he wants to enroll in police school when his family visited this summer. Wanted to help other people just like me, see? I felt uncomfortable, as if a distant relative and not a police officer stood before me. Oh, you know what? Little boys like you should stay at home. Steer away from trouble. The times have changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. You don't say. Well then, what grade are you in, Anton? Sixth. Have you made any friends here so far? Not yet. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break. Then I'll leave you my number, just in case. Call me, if you have any new info. Sorry, I'm just like looking at like the detail of this, this room, and there's a lot, and I love it. This latch is scaring me, though, over on the left. Um, it's kind of covered up by the dialogue box, but... The policemen were gone uh, gone along with their shadows, the smell of cheap cologne and the photo of a smiling boy. His face still stood before my eyes. I wonder what it was like for him being all alone there. For some reason, I thought of the forest swaying in the wind. What did his poor parents feel? And what would my parents do if I'd gone missing? Would they cry and thrash around hysterically? Or would they accuse each other, like they always do, and forget about me eventually? Mom, Mom, this Vova, did he go missing in our forest? Seems like it. Poor child. I looked out the window at the road. The police UAZ drove off toward the village. Is that just the type of car? A Soviet and Russian off-road freight passenger car brand, which was produced at the Ulyana... Y Ulyanovsk car factory? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm going to butcher literally all of these, these words. <laughs> the officer's nephew came to mind when I was uh, splitting off old paint from the windowsill. I remembered all the teenage mystery novels from the Black Kitty series I've read this summer. Your average boys and girls investigated all sorts of mysteries there. They looked for clues... Uh, spied on suspicious people. I think I'm gonna check the glossary every once in a while, not for literally everything. Um, and after a set of amazing adventures, bam! Solved any complicated case. They became local celebrities and must have made their parents very proud. I noticed a trail of policemen's footprints that led to the forest. And then it clicked in my head. Why don't I start an investigation of my own? Maybe I'll find that lost boy. And I'll get a reward! Oya will be so happy. And not only Olya, mom and dad too. Maybe they'll even forget about their quarrels for a while. Maybe I'll even end up saying, uh, maybe I'll even save us from the D word? I fantasized about bu buying Olya a Tamagotchi and getting a cassette player and a bunch of tapes for myself and a whole box of Kinder Surprise. 
When was the last time your parents bought us any toys? Last autumn, I think. My dad had lost his job at the time. That's when, uh, there's that annoying song about it. I had little to no idea what was the, uh, what was the accountant's job like. They count money, I think. Neighbors used to envy us. But nowadays, mom and dad barely had money to afford sweets, and dad would always divide a single chocolate bar between me and Olya. <laughs> Maybe that's the point. Maybe he wants them to trip. Sometimes I gave her my share, too. No matter how much I wanted to eat sweets, she was still just a pipsqueak. I couldn't wait to go out, looking for clues. I'm going outside. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. You want the police to go around with your photograph next? The forest is so thick. What if uh, the boy got snatched up by wild animals? Or something even worse? Even worse, echoed through the hallway. I won't go far. I'll stay away from the forest. That's there for the wolves to trip on. <laughs> Perfect. Did you hear what I said? Or should I repeat myself? Better go pack your school bag or play with Olya. Sound of splashing water came from the kitchen. I thought that was a fucking chicken. <laughs> it meant that the argument was over and mom had the last word. The dark stuffy closet. Mom says it smells like mice, but how would she know their smell? She hates when I stick my nose in there. She's afraid I'll cut myself on the freshly sharpened axe. And Fuck Olya can't even- strips. Fuck your chicken strips! And Olya can't even be lured close to it. She thinks Babaya is living there. I tried to help her fight her fears once. I opened the door and turned on a dim lamp so she would see there was nothing but cobwebs, dad's tools, and scratched walls. She still didn't believe me. And I like to hide in the closet and listen to Olya count outside. One, two, three, better hide from me. And then drag her feet on the creaking floorboards, hoping that she wouldn't need to look for me in the cramped monster's den. Also, what time is it? 9.01. It is. What is this? Oh, just shows me what I can look at. That's fine. We will save here. <laughs> Birdie, it's bedtime. You heard him. Yes. Yes, I want to quit. Alright. It's saved. It's quit. I like this. I'm very excited to uh, continue reading that at some point for y'all. <laughs> it's time for bed. Uh, let's go ahead and set up a raid, though. Go hang out with someone. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna make a default choice. We're gonna go hang out with Sam... Uh, Sam Killjoy. We love Sam. Sam's great. Travis is also your internet mom. Everyone's your internet mom now. It's true. Now it's very quiet. I don't know what's going on with that, but whatever. Um, Let's go hang out with Sam. Go say hello. There's a raid. Um, or our raid message. First one is for everyone. Second one's for subs. Thanks for being here, y'all. This was a lot of fun. I'm sorry that... Sorry to all of us, myself included, that uh, Song of Horror is not functioning. It's upsetting, to say the least. Uh, but we got Tiny Bunny going, and I'm excited about that. Um, <laughs> right? Poor Alex. Poor Alex. Um, I'm gonna see what I can do about getting that fixed for us at some point. But until then, have a great night. Take care of your dang selves. Sleep well for those of you who are gonna sleep. Just have a good time zone. Have a good time zone. We'll see y'all later. Bye.